Hi there everyone, my name is Blunderhilg Alpha, and today I'm going to show you guys a few things that might help you to understand more the texturing pipeline in Blender 2.6. It helps with speeding up your production and to teach you how to more efficiently manage textures in Blender. So uh, thanks a lot for joining me for the next few videos and let's get started. So here we have Blender uh, 2.65 open here uh, with the uh, front panel opened up. And what we're going to do is actually just click off into the gray space and uh, that'll uh, minimize that panel for us. And we just have our default cube. Uh, your guys' uh, default Blender setup might look a little bit different, but uh, this is what we're gonna be rolling with today. So um, if you're already an advanced user of Blender, you're, you're gonna know this stuff already, but if you're not, uh, stick around and I'm gonna teach you some uh, helpful tips here. Uh, so first off, an introduction on Blender uh, textures. Uh, it, it's handled uh, different differently than other um, 3D programs. Um, in that, I mean, you can load up a texture, texture your object, and it may or may not render uh, depending on your settings. Uh, so what you'll have to do is actually link in a material like you would in Maya uh, in with your texture. So what I can do now is uh, right click on one of my um, separators here and split area, and then click to confirm that. And I'll change this window type to a UV image editor. And this will bring up our UV image editor where we can go to image, open image, and navigate to our image file and select that. So this is the texture we're gonna be using today. Um, so we still have our cube here and we'll go uh, hit tab to go into edit mode so we can unwrap this thing. So with uh, everything selected with A, we will unwrap it, go to U, and just we're going to go to a smart UV project today. So let's hit that and we'll just go with those default parameters so we hit OK with that. And this will take us to our uh, uh, what it just gave us, it, what it just unwrapped for us. And uh, this is just a basic um, six sided layout here. But uh, what we want to do um, is actually apply this texture to that. And as you can see, if we go into texture mode, uh, it actually already is, so Blender's a little bit smarter than I am right now, but um, uh, what we would need to do is select all of our points and then go to, uh, let's see, so go to this, how it was, this is what it was, and then you're going to want to go to this uh, icon here and select which texture you want. So if we were to add, if we were to add another image here, let's uh, do that. Let's add another image here to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So here's another image, something I was working on earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Something I was working on earlier. Um, you can see that whatever we select or load up, it's going to texture um, or splat on that texture, uh, whatever it is. Uh, so if we select this one, you can see that it'll change it. And um, yeah, so that's how you can uh, unwrap and splat on just a texture really roughly uh, onto a cube uh, in Blender. But here's the catch. This here is just a preview because if we were to, and I hope I'm not wrong because I haven't used this newest uh, version of Blender yet, but if we were to actually render out at a, at a camera like I just did and render this out, um, even with lights, we shouldn't actually get a texture yeah, so you can see that it's actually not rendering out a texture, and that is because we still have the default um, material on it, which is a Lambert, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. It may be a blend, actually. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, but it's a standard gray blend. So even though you can see in the GLSL preview here that we have a uh, texture on our cube, that's actually just a preview of the texture uh, just to see uh, what it looks like. So if we render out again, we will not be able to see it no matter uh, what we do. However, if we right click and select our cube, we can go to our uh, materials panel, which I think is F9. Uh, let's make sure on that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they got rid of those hotkeys. But if you go here on your right uh, properties panel, you can see that um, checkerboard uh, sphere here. Just click that, and that is our material. And we click the new to assign a new material, and we'll name that cube by uh, just selecting here in this. Uh, uh, area here and then just type in the cube. And this will give us our uh, diffuse, specular, shading, transparency. This is all your material parameters. Uh, you can change the type 
from a Fresnel or a Fre Fres Frenet or <laughs> however you say that uh, tune, Lambert, etc. Um, but this is not where the textures are handled. This is just the uh, the specularity, the diffuse, how it shades. Does it emit? Is it translucent? Is it transparency uh, or transparent? Uh, how does it handle subsurface scattering? Do you want it to handle shadows? Do you want it to reflect? Um, is it shadeless? Do you want tangent shading? Uh, do you want it to interpolate um, the shadows, etc.? There's a lot of really advanced material parameters in this uh, section because this is the materials window. However, if we want to actually assign textures and procedural generations to this material, we can go over to this really, really cool tab called the Textures tab, and it's just to the right of our materials here. And on the next video, we're going to be going over the Textures tab and what everything you can do with it and uh, so click part two and join me for that next video thanks a lot for watching